Hello and thanks for joining us here at France 24. I'm Annelise Borges. Coming up, a very special message to Mark Zuckerberg. In today's show, we talk to the hacker who slipped behind the wall of the Facebook founder. And in Test 24, we take a closer look at a new technology that might replace Wi-Fi. Li-Fi, or light fidelity, may be coming your way sooner than you think. But before we get to these stories, let's take a look at the cost of mobile phone voice communications around Europe. The figure of the week is brought to you by Le Journal du Net. European consumers are not all in the same boat when it comes to mobile phone rates. On average, a one-minute call in the Netherlands costs about eight times more than in Lithuania. France is also one of the most expensive countries, with one minute costing nearly 13 cents. These price differences are mainly due to competition issues between operators and their business practices, rather than the quality of networks and the standard of living in each country. Mark Zuckerberg recently received a special message on his Facebook page. Palestinian programmer Halil Shreter decided to go out of his way to warn Facebook about a glitch that allowed any stranger to post on someone's wall without being in their friends list. He proved his point and got a lot of attention. Khalil Shrete is a hacker but one of the good guys, a white hat who breaks into websites not for nefarious reasons but to expose vulnerabilities and report them. An important service for major sites that are constantly under attack from hackers with a different agenda. Facebook offers rewards of $500 or more to those who report security glitches. Khalil found one, a bug that allows any Facebook user to post on anyone else's wall, even if they're not on each other's friends list. But after he got no response from official channels, he went directly to the top, hacking into the personal page of Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg to leave a message. That got Facebook's attention. It fixed the bug, but Khalil didn't get his reward. Facebook says he didn't follow correct procedures. Fellow White Hats warn that Facebook is shooting itself in the foot by giving hackers incentive to exploit bugs instead of report them. To reward Khalil, security expert Mark Mefre set up a crowdfunding initiative that surpassed its $10,000 goal in a day. The money is to go directly to Khalil. And I'm now pleased to be joined by Khalil Shrater. Khalil, thank you so much for joining us today. I would like to first ask you why and how you broke into uh, Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook page. Uh, hello, uh, how are you? Um... First, I didn't broke time Zuckerberg uh, his timeline from the first uh, step. Uh, there were uh, several reports I took uh, from the beginning, and it took me for uh, four days uh, to five days uh, sending and receiving emails from Facebook, uh, and I have been forced uh, to put that post on time Zuckerberg timeline. Uh, first, I sent them my, uh, my first report to Facebook security team, telling them that uh, you guys have a, a serious uh, bug in your uh, Facebook uh, main site, and you need to fix it. And after uh, their reply back, this is not a bug. Uh, and I do my second report, including a picture shows me posting uh, that uh, a post to Sarah Goodin, uh, with uh, whom she was. Uh, a classmate with uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, at college, uh, and Facebook replies back, this is not a bug. So I was forced uh, to put uh, that uh, famous post uh, to Mark Zuckerberg timeline. After I already told them that I can do and post to Time Zuckerberg timeline, but I do respect uh, Mark and I do respect people privacy. When you first found this bug, were you looking for one specifically? Were you trying to find a problem with Facebook or did it happen by accident? Uh, no, uh, it wasn't an accident, neither I wasn't looking for a bug. I am a programmer and I was doing some Facebook ABBs programming and I noticed that there is a code. Uh, if we can edit that code and uh, send that code to Facebook servers, we may get another response from Facebook servers. Uh, Facebook servers and I uh, did that and I uh, got surprised why I got uh, that response from serv uh, Facebook servers to let me post and uh, get me a new uh, authentication to post uh, to any uh, Facebook user. 
And I know you were about to receive around $13,000 as a reward from online donors. What do you intend to do with this money and with your future? Uh, first, I want to thank Mark uh, Mifflet for uh, his uh, donation and bounce started. And I want to thank everyone who uh, donated for me and donated for White Hat Peebles. Uh, actually, the money, I'm still waiting for the money. I didn't receive uh, uh, any cent from uh, all of that uh, $13,000. But I'm planning to start, and um, I'm thinking for a new project uh, for me. Thank you so much, Halil, for joining us today from Hamala. And we're going to have to move on now. It's time for Test 24. You may not have heard of Li-Fi yet, but chances are you will in the near future. Li-Fi or Light Fidelity is a type of wireless communication technology that instead of using radio frequencies, as in Wi-Fi, uses light as a carrier for data. Take a look at this report to discover what Li-Fi is all about. What if light could transport your emails, videos and music? That's exactly what this French company is offering with Li-Fi, or Light Fidelity, a new wireless communication technology. By turning on and off a LED lamp thousands of times per second, a frequency is created and data can be transferred. People think it's magic to use light to send information. But in reality, it's really simple. Switching an LED lamp off, you get zero. Switching it back on gives you one. So a sequence of zeros and ones is created and transported. And if on the other side you have a receptor, you can recover the data that came with the light. And that could be useful to transport internet bandwidth, including music and videos. So what are the advantages of switching to light? These are light electromagnetic waves. They're not harmful. That's the first advantage. Second, Li-Fi allows you to mix two functions in one. Today, lighting and Wi-Fi are separated. With this technology, users benefit from two functions in one. Experts have talked about fears of a possible saturation of the current Wi-Fi system because of increased demand. Well, if that ever happens, thanks to Li-Fi, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you for watching this edition of Tech24. Don't forget you can get in touch via Facebook or on Twitter. We leave you today with Eddie's Run, a project to support Edward Snowden. The game was developed by Binji, a studio in Germany. And according to the developers, this is their way to protest against, I quote, inhuman actions of a large number of governments towards the citizens of the world, unquote. On the website, you can play the game and sign a petition to support Snowden. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Blah blah blah. Run, Eddie, run.